So next one we've got here is from EOS. It's called Earth to Dora. And it was released on the 30th of October. It's 12 tracks and roughly 43 minutes long. Um, so Earth to Dora's 13th studio album by American alt-rock Weirdos Eels, uh, the brainchild of Mark Oliver Everett, who I think is uh, the only permanent member of the band. Yeah. Um, now, it's kind of mental to me that this is their 13th album. Um, I kind of consider myself as an Eels fan, but I think I've only really heard about six of those albums, um, including this one. Um, but, you know, they've been on the go for quite a while, so... Because did their first album come up come out in like 1996, 1997, something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Beautiful Freak, I think it was 1996 yeah. it came yeah. out. And that's got, I mean, that's got a few of their best known songs on it, like um, My Beloved Monster, which if you've seen Shrek, you'll know. Um, Novocaine for the Soul, which is um, on, um, if you remember Dom Jolly's Trigger Happy TV. It was on there. Um, there'll be a few others, like Susan's House is a really good track on the album. That's actually, like, like sort of growing up, getting into sort of alternative music, that was that was one of my favourite albums, actually. Beautiful Freaks, really good. Um, but I've kind of just dipped in and out of their stuff. Like, um, I remember you gave me a shot of Soul Jacker. Yeah, yeah, Where's Soul Jacker. And um, Soul Jacker is like a lot rockier than a, than than I think they normally are. I mean, I mean, Beautiful Freak isn't. It's got the odd. It's got a mixture, I suppose, of the sort of stuff they're known for, like acoustic stuff and kind of slow downbeat stuff. But there's experimental stuff on it. Where Soul Jacker is much more rockier. Um, there's Daisies of the Galaxy, which is more i think more acoustic driven but um the title track on that has got a song um it's basically about a man and a boy on the run who go and sit in a movie theater and watch terminator 2 (laughs) you don't necessarily get that from the lyrics but um that's what it's apparently about um and um soul jacker's got the song um soul jacker part one and then it's got um I can't remember the name of the song, but it was used in Monkey... Monkey Dust. Monkey Dust. That's yeah, it. So, so, like you said, Soul Jacker Part 1 and 2 is really rocky tracks. Um, but yeah, it's called That's Not Really Funny, um, yes. which is changing yeah. for Monkey Dust, which is probably the most harrowing adult comedy, adult animated comedy that's, that's ever been created. Um, so if you like really grim comedy, then... Monkey Dust comes highly recommended. Um, How many CDs were there? I think there were three series, but I think only one was ever released on DVD. On DVD, I thought that. Um, but I think there were actually three seasons of it. Um, but yeah, really, re- really underrated show, I think. Um, so definitely check that one out. Um, so anyway, we should probably talk about the new album. Um, they did well. They did have one. They did have an album out in. 2018 called the, the deconstruction. deconstruction yeah which i was quite anticipating it coming out and then when it did come out i wasn't really all that wowed by it and i just kind of but i didn't really i don't suppose i really gave it that much of a chance um and then with this new album again i, I don't think it was immediately wowed by it either but i've given this far more of a chance to settle in and and overall i think it's a really good album what's your overall thoughts on this um, I mean, I'm not a massive Eels fan, you know, like, kind of similar to yourself, I've kind of dipped in and out over the years. Um, for me, it kind of felt as if I had all the hallmarks of what people have come to expect of an Eels album. Um, it's a really easy listen, it's got ease, kind of trademark, gravelly spoken word vocal delivery, um, it's beautifully textured. A lot of the songs have quite a bit of depth. Um, there's quite a lot going on in a lot of the tracks in terms of kind of the musical arrangement. Perhaps with the exception of the last song in the album, "Waking Up." Um, in fact, I think there's maybe a couple of songs that are pretty much just straightforward um, acoustic numbers. 
Um, and although I've kind of said that it's it's got kind of ease, trademark, kind of spoken word, vocal delivery, there were times where I thought he kind of felt as if he was kind of channeling some Nick Cave, late Johnny Cash um, kind of vibes, particularly on Waking Up, um, which I really quite enjoyed. Um, with regards to the kind of lyrical content, um, a lot of the tracks feel quite melancholic. Um, however, there's also a great deal of optimism in there as well. Yeah. Um, such as on track number two, Are We All Right Again, which um, we featured as part of the November Positivity playlist. And for my money, kind of felt a wee bit reminiscent of Fresh Feeling from the band's 2001 album, Soul Jacker, as we kind of mentioned earlier on. The kind of track opens with this kind of jaunty sounding keyboard melody, a shaker, kind of shuffling drum beat. And has this really kind of uplifting chorus section. Um, in particular, I love the bit where he's kind of talking about the birds and the bees singing to him. Um, particularly the bit where I think the, the birds and bees say something like to him, do you want to get high? And he's like, mm, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that. Um, well, he's later talking about, is there not a bit where he goes, hey, Mr. Bluebird, give me a hit of that. And then give it to the Meiji cat or something. So it's, it's kind of psychedelic a wee bit of that song. Yeah, that's good though. Um, there's also kind of tracks that appear to deal with love and relationships, such as Who You Say You Are, um, which I believe was the second single released from the album um, on the 1st of September. It's this kind of twinkling, floaty number in which he kind of questions whether his new bow is worth of his time or not, particularly whether she's worthy of a song or not. <laughs> Um, similar to their song number five, Dark and Dramatic, which follows along the same vein. Uh, there's also Gentle Souls as well, which perhaps one of the more kind of beat numbers on the album. Um, well, wait, what did you think? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Um, I think, I mean, all of these songs are about relationships and, and different <clears throat> relationship experiences. Um, I, think, I think he recently just, became divorced so I don't know if that's maybe got that might have something to do with it I mean if you I mean listen to the first song and it's so like sickly sweet like the song's called anything for boo and it's like anything for boo oh boo I do I do I do I do anything for boo my love is true it's true it's true it's true and it's listening to that is it's hard to listen to, but like the lyrics are so cringy. But um, I like the song in general. Um, like um, it's a good album opener, apart from maybe those kind of cringy lyrics. Um, and then a lot of the other songs are more like, um, like who you say you are is a sort of paranoid kind of song. Like you don't know whether you this person you should be getting into a relationship with this person or not kind of thing um and uh you've got dark and dramatic like you said which is like again it's like somebody stuck in an unhealthy relationship um yeah. but they, they you know they're desperately in love with this person but they know that that they probably shouldn't be with them um and then are you fucking your exes <laughs> even oh, more yeah, that's like, that, that's one of the best songs, I think, um, just uh, because it's got that kind of dark humour that the eels are are known for. Um, and it, it's just a guy about, like, his wife or his girlfriend is kind of going out, not telling him where she's going. Um, she's out for hours and he's like, you know, are you fucking your ex? So it's... it's <laughs> Isn't the lyric something like, I get it, everybody loves sex, but I have to ask, are you fucking your ex? Yeah. 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 It's a great song. Um and uh yeah, there's some there's some there's some really good stuff on here. All of unsent letters, um, really beautiful, soulful, quite heartbreaking song. Just kind of lamenting a past relationship and past mistakes. Baby let's make it real. It's probably a toss up between that and um Are You Fucking Your Ex over which is my favourite song. Right. Uh, and it's quite a forward-looking song. I mean, that it's um, a forward-looking song about getting into a relationship. Um, you know, with the there's the the line in the chorus, which is "Baby, you're a fool, me all the way you make me feel," which is 
just a really simple kind of quite genius line um and uh yeah there's a there's a lot of kind of um acoustic instrumentation and kind of relatively clean guitars but there's like the the bass is really good in general all throughout the album um and uh yeah i i I had a lot a lot of fun with this yeah absolutely man what did you rate it i think i've got my nine to be honest okay um and uh, when yeah i wasn't that excited about it when i first heard it but but actually listening to it through um i think it's a really solid album and um i think if you if you've ever been a fan of eels and you've not really bothered with them um then you should go back and you should definitely jump on this and check it out because it's it's a pleasant surprise um i would say mm-hmm. absolutely i enjoyed it i gave it an 8 out of 10 um but no i i really enjoyed it it's yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not a massive Eels fan. Um, I've just kind of dipped in and out of it. But yeah, it's for me. It's yeah, it's it's a just it's an Eels an Eels album. Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I saw I saw the Eels once at Teen the Park. They were really good. Um, I went to see them on my own because nobody else knew who the fuck they were, and um, everyone else wanted to see Foo Fighters, and I was like, I've already seen Foo Fighters. Um, and I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> that's like their new album, shit. So was that the year that I went with you, or the year that I was there? That was because I can't remember. Yeah, what... I think it's... that was that year actually. No, tell a lie, it wasn't. I, it, this was like in two thousand eleven or something. And um, yeah, everybody wanted to watch Foo Fighters. I was like, fuck this. Like I'm going to see the Eels, and like no one would come with me. So I just got tanked up on um vodka jellies <laughs> like the, oh. there was somebody going around like uh, selling vodka jellies in the crowd just as um Foo Fighters were like playing a couple of songs and yeah I just I just tanned about eight of them and then I went to see Eels and I was absolutely fucked and to be honest with you don't really remember much about it but I know that it was good and um I remember that, that it was a massive band like I was kind of expecting it to just be uh, E and like two or three other people. But right. there's tons of them on stage. Like I had, I'm sure he had like a full like like a violin section or something. I mean, this might be my drunken name. Yes. But, yeah. And what did they sound like live? Can you remember? I remember it being really good. And um, I think they played a few songs, like obviously played a few songs that I was keen to hear about. I think mean, they played a few that I I didn't know what they were, and other than that, I just remember kind of st- <laughs> stumbling about into people. Oh man! So <laughs> I imagine there were people there. They were like, "Who's this drunken prick?" Like he's just kind of. So I was talking to the person at the the doorway to the tent for ages, like just before I went in, I was absolutely gobbed. But um, good times. Because that's the thing, I don't suppose they're really the type of band that you go and see wrecked, is, are they? Like, I, I probably not, no. But no. I, I was, I was buckled. But um, <laughs> so, yeah. So if, the moral of that story is that um, eels are quite good life, um, even if you can't remember. You're really in spirit, if not in mind. Yeah. Um, Body. I don't know if that's how morals of stories work, but <laughs> so yeah, a uh, good band, good album, and a good live as well. Um, okay, so that was Earth to Dora by Eels. <laughs> Thank you. 